Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome today to the webinar on what's new with Active Trust. Really excited to introduce my co-panelists, um, Anne Hiller, she's from uh, Farsight, and it's one of our Threat Intel partners. Welcome, Anne. Why don't you introduce yourself and Same. tell us a few words? Great. Thanks, Sam. Um, it's been my pleasure to, uh, to be working with uh, Infoblox for almost the past year since I joined first, or since I joined uh, Infoblox. Or, um, I have a background in security with uh, growth stage companies going back to 2005 when I joined a company called Home Security that had behavioral malware detection, which was acquired by Symantec. Our technology was rebranded as Sonar and pushed into all the Norton products. So again, it's been my pleasure to be working with Infoblox uh, for the past year and very excited to see uh, the newly observed domain feed come to market. Now, welcome and thank you for taking the time. And uh, I want to introduce my partner in crime, John Abbey, who is the senior product manager. John, welcome. Thanks, Sam. Glad to be here. Uh, thanks for inviting me. And yeah, again, my name is John Abbey. Uh, Senior Product Manager here at uh, Infoblox for Security and Threat Intelligence, and uh, been here at Infoblox now for for several years. Um, and really, I'm involved in a lot of the work that's being done with the DMS firewall feeds, our, our Tide platform, and our Threat Lookup Tool uh, .ca. But maybe before we get started here, Sam, uh, when we talk about Active Trust, maybe you know, since you're in product marketing, if, if you want to explain really what Active Trust is and uh, what the value that brings. Yes, thank you, John. And uh, be sure I'm going to shoot some questions back at you as well. <laughs> so Active Trust. So first of all, I work in uh, security product marketing at Infoblox, and my name is Sam Kumarsamy. So Active Trust, I mean, simply put, it proactively helps customers detect and uh, prevent cyber threats. That's kind of the high-level pitch. But actually, Active Trust is a bundle. It actually includes a DNS firewall, um, uh, an on-prem DNS firewall, um, threat, intelligence, threat intelligence data exchange, which we call as TIDE. It also includes an analytics tool called uh, Threat Insight in the cloud. There's also an on-prem version available. And it includes Infoblox dossier. So it's a bundle of four uh, products, if you will. And what it does is it actually prevents DNS-based data exfiltration and malware communications to CNC sites. So it does it at the uh, DNS control plane. And the threat intelligence data exchange actually helps to collect, aggregate, curate threat intelligence, both from external and internal sources, and aggregate that, validate it, add our own classification, as well as properties and make sure there are least number of false positives before distributing it to the security infrastructure. And last but not the least is actually doing threat investigation. So we enable threat investigation so that by adding context and then you can add priority to the different threats so you know which threats to address first. So all of this together is what we call as active trust. Great. Um, I know that uh, you've been communicating out there uh, with our customers and internally uh, with our with our users uh, about some uh, integrations that we currently have or upcoming integrations that we plan on having. Maybe if you could uh, speak to those for a few yeah. minutes. Yes, certainly, John. And uh, you know that's kind of one one of the key points with this active trust release. We have some really great integrations with Tide. Tide, again, you know, just to reiterate, it's our threat intelligence data exchange platform that is very open and flexible in a sense that it's able to collect all the information or different like threat feeds, both from internal and external sources. And one of them being, of course, Farsight, who, who uh, one of our threat partners, but we have additional partners such as Serbal, CrowdStrike, Pishmi, so these are the third party threat intelligence feeds that we are able to ingest, aggregate, right? As well as our own internal threat intelligence. And 
We also use open source and the Department of Homeland Security's automated indicator sharing. So that's the kind of ingestion we have within our flexible and open platform called Tide. And we, are, we have our own cyber threat intelligence unit that actually curates that information and adds the classifications and properties that I talked about. An example of that would be like taking, for example, malware, you know, classifying malware, saying it's coming from a certain CNC site. So that's the classification. And the property would be, hey, it's a rabbit malware, which is very malicious. So you know how to prioritize that as one of the key ones to immediately block. So that's the kind of uh, uh, intelligence we bring to the table or the value add. And then what we do is we distribute using API in various formats, such as sticks, um, a Ceph format, JSON, um, and CSV format, very flexible to the security infrastructure. So the two key integrations we have with this release of Active Trust is one is with Cisco Threat Intelligence Director. So that is what we call as a TIP platform, uh, Threat Intelligence platform. And so they value our data because you know we kind of provide that kind of insight that I just talked about. So they take it through their, uh, uh, through their uh, firepower uh, threat intelligence, they actually apply it to their own products, they meaning in this case, Cisco. So that integration is available now where it enables them to either block or monitor more threats using, this, uh, using our threats because they value again our threats and they're able to block that or monitor it. And it also helps them reduce the number of alerts for them to look at. So from a business perspective, it helps them improve their security posture as well as the situation. And similarly, we are also working with uh, Checkpoints Threat Cloud, which is another tip platform. So currently work in progress and we should have that integration uh, in a few months. Actually. So those are the two integrations I wanted to talk about and make our customers well aware of, John. So with that, John, I know we have Ann Hiller here, but I know we, we are doing some really exciting integrations from, uh, from three uh, external vendors or our uh, threat intelligence vendors and uh, would like you to talk a little bit about what value they add in terms of what exactly they provide and I know we are making it available in RTC format or the response policy zone format to be applied or ingested by our DNS firewall. So I think our customers would be really excited to hear more from you, our product manager. Yeah, uh, sure thing, Sam. Yeah, we're making uh, several of our third-party uh, uh, third threat intelligence feeds um, is subscribed to them, uh, available in RPC format. You know, this is part of our, these data partners are part of our, our marketplace of, of partners that you can subscribe to and ingest data into our time platform that you explained, uh, they explained earlier. Um, up to now, to this point, we're in our, as of a few weeks ago, you, you're only able to, uh, uh, able to distribute your, your partner data um, to your to the customer's infrastructure, security infrastructure, via our type platform. And that was done via APIs and can be done in a variety of, of, of formats. Now, in the past couple of weeks, you're able to take your partner subscription that you have, and with these uh, um, few of our, our data partners that I'll walk through here in, in a few minutes, you're able to, in addition to stream out that data via type, you're also able to uh, access that data and 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 distribute it as an RPG feed for your DNS firewall for that uh, additional layer of, uh, of production. The three partners that we are that we're doing this for is uh, we have our, our our threat track and we take their uh, threat track security and we take their border patrol feed and uh, the border patrol feed is basically is a blacklist of, of suspicious and malicious domains and subdomains by by uh, by threat track and again um, you know this is primarily used for your firewall your IDS your IPS gateways mail security um, and you know, on other defenses and um, again you can stream that out of time but now you can also stream that you know out of uh, out of the box with your subscription as an RPG feed uh, into your DNS firewall. The other partner that uh, 
working that we work with is a proof point emerging threats and is taking their IP and domain, it's their IP and domain reputational fees. And uh, these are our IPs and domains that have been you know involved in suspicious and malicious activity observed uh, directly by their uh, by their proof points or emerging threat lab here. You know, again, primarily you know, out of active trust, out of tight, you can you know, again use it for SIMs, firewalls, IDSs, um, and, and IPSs, and again now in RPG format, RPG format for your for your DNS firewall. You can also uh, uh, take uh, far size uh, security, their security, uh, their their newly observed domain fee. And this is, you know, again, can be used as an incremental uh, layer of defense to uh, to target and combat malware data exfiltration, malware spam attacks, which um, which originates uh, sometimes at these newly launched uh, newly launched domains. Now we know that you know new uh, new domains are are created every day, you know, and they're published every day, and not all of them. Um, have you know legitimate business purposes. So you know threat actors often they're going to pro programmatically use these different domains for their attack campaigns, um, and then often they're used then to uh, be used for hosting and, and, and phishing sites through, through malware. And our special guest here, and we'll talk about that here more in a minute. But uh, um, but as I continue here, um, you know, these are you know, the benefits you know are going to be. You know, protection against these emerging threats and, and zero day attacks that I'm sure Ann will talk more about also. Um, this one obviously I'm, I'm really excited about because because of our special guest and you know and it's great data from Farsight. We'll talk more about just, just Farsight security in general and more about the new observed uh, domain uh, data set. Uh, before I, I hand off for introductions, you know Sam what you're uh, showing there is really the Kind of how it works, the the integration. You know, and if we use Farsight as an example, you know, we're ingesting data in near real time from from uh, Farsight, you know, and putting it into our our time platform. You know, and from there, you're able to then, you know, you can distribute that data, um, you know, via Tide, via APIs into your into your SIM or firewall or routers or email servers, IDS, IPS, what have you, but uh, that arrow on the right there is, is what is new of what I'm talking about, is being able to take that data also and add that increment, incremental layer of protection for your DNS firewall by creating these available via, via um, in RPG format. Hey, uh, thank you, John. So there's, you know, to be honest, there's very little overlap, right, between these threat feeds, because that's one of the questions sometimes customers ask, like, why do they need three threat feeds? Right, so the idea here is there's very little overlap because each of them bring in their unique value. Is that correct, John? Yeah, I mean, it, is, it goes down to um, incremental, incremental layers of protection. I mean, there's, there's feeds that we know that are, that are malicious and bad as destinations that you do not want to go to. You know, adding a new reserve domain feed, so you know, is it can be treated more as a policy-based feed. You know, we're not saying necessarily that that these are are 100 100% bad. We're just saying that these things have been newly observed domain. These are newly observed domains, and it gives your security team a chance to protect themselves from these zero-day attacks and really you know, take a look at these domains and decide what to do. Okay, thank you, John. I think that should um, uh, help the customers a lot who have been asking these type of questions. And um, so, uh, once again, welcome and thank you for participating in, in this webinar as a partner of uh, Infoblox. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your company, Farsight? I'd be happy to, Sam. Thank you. Um, Farsight is now five years old. Um, the company was founded uh, by Paul Vixie, who is one of the giants of the domain name system um, and the DNS industry. Uh, Paul was a co-founder of ISC, worked there many, many years, guided it to, uh, to what it is today. Um, he was inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame in 2014 author of by nine, and the credentials just go on and on and on. There are very few people, um, cricket aside, on this planet who have as much expertise in this area as Paul. 
Um, the company to this day, um, we have been collecting and providing data on the domain name system um, for five years. It's what we do. It is non-judgmental data. So there's one difference between what we do and some of your other feeds is that it's ours is purely data, purely factual, really a distillation of observed uh, query response pairs between um, uh, basically between the recursive and the authoritative server layers um, in the system. But there's a lot of information that can be teased and gleaned out of that. Uh, we have the longest look back in the industry and we provide this information both in terms of passive DNS database um, as well as real, a series or a library of real-time feeds uh, focused on, on different aspects of how we want to slice and dice the data that we do have. We're working right now with um, just um, the newly observed domains, uh, which is what we're here to talk about again today. This is um, picking up on what John said. Uh, we are, this is not meant to um, displace any other um, threat intel feed. Uh, really, we are here to supplement. This is a uh, zero hour protection against those quick strike attacks that are out there that are going to come from a newly observed domain. Um, different from newly registered, that can be spoofed. Uh, DNS is the one element of your defensive posture that has to be true, it has to be factual, or these attacks aren't going to work. Um, it's designed to help protect against both delivery of malware uh, via phishing attacks and things of that sort, but also against exfiltration um, in these situations. So very useful. The, um, what we see, we observe about 150,000 newly observed domains every day, about mm -hmm. to a second. Not all of them are going to be malicious, but a, a certain percentage are. And what we do is provide our customers, uh, Tide customers, the ability to uh, preemptively block, deflect, depending on the rules, the policies that you want to put in place with this information, um, until reputation services or other threat intel services have a chance to catch up and render a verdict or a decision as to whether or not this domain is malicious or it's good and should be whitelisted. So it can be used uh, very versatile. Um, again, the longer the time that passes, um, you're going to see FPs climb a little bit. We have customers that are putting this in place for just a few hours. We have others that leave it in place for a few days. So it, again, it's up to the industry. It's up to the individual customer in terms of um, the risk that they want to assume um, and, and their mix of, of other defensive products that they're using. So um, very versatile. Um, the, uh, can you flip back a slide, Sam? Um, this is, I think, an important, uh, so we, this, this slide, thank you. Um, newly observed, and it's really, you need a benchmark and compared to what? So you're going to see newly observed domains is there have been several different offerings brought to market by different vendors in the last 12 months. Um, but it's really the compared to what that is going to be important here. And with Farsight having the largest uh, passive DNS database, that is what we are comparing these observations against. And if we haven't seen it in our look back to June of 2010, we consider it newly observed, but we've got, uh, again, the most substantial um, database to compare against in the industry today. We take in two terabytes, we have over 100 billion DNS resolutions going back to 2010. So uh, we believe this is, um, when we say newly observed, we've believe it's solid. Um, this all information is all collected through a global network of over 500 sensors that are placed around the world. Um, and again, those sensors are delivering to us. And after we validate against the uh, our passive DNS database, we stream real time, again, about 150,000 of these per day uh, to our subscribers. Uh, last point I want to make, I'm not sure where all of our listeners are today, but there, because we collect above the recursive layer, um, there is no PII um, in this data at all. So something with GDPR that people don't need to be concerned about. 
Um, joint solution benefits, there are, um, it just, over the past year working with uh, InfoBlox, uh, this is a combination that just makes so much sense because of the DNS strength um, in your products um, and DNS firewalls with the, the introduction of support for RPZ uh, makes tremendous sense. The first three here, malware containment, brand protection, and, and anti-phishing, uh, spam filtering are all in a, in a defensive posture for organizations to, again, buy time until um, your teams have a chance to really um, render judgment and decide what permanent response that the organization wants to affect or put in place. Uh, rapid threat investigation, the last um, solution benefit that we see is also um, brings a, a, a positive um, in terms of investigation. We have uh, customers, we have clients who are actually comparing when they are um, actually judging or investigating a domain. Has it appeared? It's another indicator of threat or an indicator of compromise that if this has appeared on a newly observed domain, it, if um, it's going to um, be assigned some additional threat points in terms of any kind of evaluation that's being done. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and because I think that's where the threat investigation tool from Infoblox uh, uh, comes into play called Dossier because, you know, it kind of gives you that history and the context. Absolutely. And, yeah, uh, to, to say, hey, if I've seen it before, then I know for a fact that, uh, hey, that is a possible threat. So it, I can prioritize that versus other type of newly observed domains, which has newly appeared and doesn't have a history. So that's another way of providing context and uh, prioritizing certain types of newly observed domains, because then you know that has been a malicious domain uh, coming in as another newly observed domain in another format. So very important point there, and um, yeah. for you to make, yeah. Uh, last slide, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to learn. Um, just a few suggestions for people. Uh, this first bullet, I cannot oversell these two webcasts. Um, Paul Vixie and Cricket Lou together, I think are two of the giants in this industry. And they got together and did a webcast last June um, about RPZ. This is not marketing fluff uh, for our listeners. This is uh, the, the depth here, the advice, the strategic aspects and the tactical suggestions for how to improve defenses with RPZ are extremely valuable. The session, um, the amount of Q&A that came in during this was so extensive that um, we did a, a spillover in, uh, in November, uh, specifically to try and answer all the questions that came in during that time. So this is available, um, I believe it's both webcast and podcast at this point, um, but two very, very good resources for people that are interested in learning specifically more about RPC as a defense mechanism. Uh, there is a joint solution brief available um, that's for available for download off of uh, either the InfoBlox or the Farsight Security website. Um, also, if you've been through one or both of these um, and want to learn more, also um, next step obvious would be to go ahead and request a briefing from your InfoBlox team. Thank you, Anne. That was uh, very helpful. Now back to John. I know with this release of Active Trust, so I just want to address you know, for, for our existing DDI customers who are looking to wet their feet on security. And uh, the idea is to say, hey, what, what, is, what is it that we are bringing to the table? Because there are three tiers of active trust, right? The active trust standard does not include Tide or any of the other enhancements to act, uh, that we bring to active trust. So specifically, uh, the reason I want to, for, for you, John, to think about is really, you know, what, what is it we bring in terms of additional threat feeds to our plus and advanced, the higher end tiered customers? And why should especially customers who are DDI customers or just an old, uh, um, I shouldn't say old, our traditional uh, DNS firewall customers who are kind of thinking, hey, why should they uh, jump to Active Trust Plus and Advanced? I understand there are some new additional threat feeds that are available at no cost to a Plus and Advanced uh, subscriber, meaning once they subscribe for Plus and Advanced, you're going to give them additional threat feeds with this release. 
So um, why don't you talk a little more about that and the difference between plus and advanced in terms of the threat feeds they're gonna get. And I think they really need to hear from you at this point in time, John. Okay, yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, before, I, before I talk about some of the new feeds that we put out, I wanna thank, uh, thank Anne again. Uh, some really good information there. And I know that uh, as she was talking, I was jotting down notes myself. There's some uh, nuggets of gold there that I didn't realize before with the far side feed and uh, was able to, to uh, jot those down. So thanks again to Anne. Um, as far as the, the plus and advanced uh, feeds, yeah, we are, um, we are introducing new feeds as of a few weeks ago um, for our plus and advanced subscribers. And really just to give our users more, more options as far as you know, when we talk about that incremental layers of, of defense, um, when we put these threat feeds out there that they can choose from. Uh, for our plus and advanced subscribers, uh, two feeds in particular, they're, uh, you know, Think of them as, as geo blocking feed. One is our is our uh, sanctions list feed, and this is the uh, you know the kind of the challenge stage. You know we have organizations here, you know especially in the U.S. where they're subject to uh, government regulations as who you know which countries they can do business with, and uh, this is dictated by the uh, office of uh, the U.S. Treasury, so the Office of Foreign Assets Control, or otherwise known as as OFAC. And there's lists of countries, for example, like Iran and Syria and, and North Korea and the, and the Balkans and you know, Liberia and, and the likes of them, you know, where you know, U.S. companies are forbidden to uh, to do business with. And so what we what we've done is we made it easy uh, for our users, and we took IPs from those countries and put them into our into a U.S. OPAC sanctions IP feed. Um, and users can again, it's a, it's a policy based feed. We're not saying these IPs are are malicious. What we're saying is that, you know, due to uh, some of the, the government regulations of, you know, who you can and can't do business with um, for, for the countries, you know, we just made it easy for somebody to to block uh, access to those uh, to those countries via their the IPs. Uh, the other the other feed that we uh, recently released again is, is a geo-based uh, policy feed, and it's our. Um, EECN feed is an Eastern European and China feed, and again, you know, companies are you know, they're going to have their own policies of 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 wanting to prevent users from going out to countries that they know that they don't really have any type of presence or they don't have any dealings with here. Um, in this example here, you know, we've created a feed really targeted around Eastern Europe and um, and China. You know, just knowing that you know there is a history of of these countries putting um, malware um, out there and, and accessing uh, your company sensitive uh, data. Again, you know, it's a, it's a list of countries. Um, our solution notes will we'll tell you which exactly which countries uh, they are, but again, it's Eastern Europe and, and, and China. And again, it's just so easy of use for the user to have a basically a single feed that will, you know, block uh, those, again, those IPs going out to, uh, out to those uh, countries. Uh, we also, for our advanced subscribers, we also created a few more uh, feeds. One is what we call our, our extended uh, time to live feeds, extended TTL feeds. And uh, for some of our advanced users, you know, they're, they're going to have a higher risk tolerance of, of wanting to block attempts at connected domains you know, that were previously identified. And we have it for each domain. And IP, we one of the value adds that we have that we provide here at Infobox is to provide a TTL time to live date, you know, that a, a domain could could go uh, stagnant or or scale. Well, for our advanced users, we extended that that TTL date. Um, again, this is for those that have you know a, a higher risk tolerance level to potentially false positives, because you know again they may may not be uh, malicious or they may maybe it's just it's gone beyond our, our our, our TTL, and and again, you know, those are primarily um, off of some existing feeds, like our base, the malware feed, um, source and our feeds, ransomware feeds, you know, which is extending the, the time to live days off of those. And then lastly, we have like a spam bot IP feed, and you know, these are our um, IP that are you know notorious for having a poor negative uh, reputation, and they've been you know basically. Um, known to be sending uh, uh, spam uh, from that particular um, that IP address. So those are uh, 
the new feeds that um, that we've introduced, you know, for for plus and advanced subscribers. And in addition to the, those feeds, you know, we've also made available, you know, as we as I mentioned earlier, the the, the partner feeds, the subscribe partners. So, you know, Thread Track and Emerging Threads and and our friends at, at, at Farsight making their data what was once only available via our type platform via API now um, in a format that you can uh, distribute in in uh, in RPG format to your DNS firewall. Hey, thanks, John. That was very educational. So, if I have to surmise what you just stated, um, let me try and do that in a single slide, if I can. So, if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, uh, PowerPoint slide here, so basically we have three versions of Active Trust: the standard, which just includes the DNS firewall, and then the plus and advanced, where we have had the enhancements to with this release release of Active Trust, right? So what what is included here? Tide integrations. So Tide is not available. So if you are an Active Trust standard customer or just a DNS firewall customer or a DDI customer, all the more reason to upgrade to plus and advanced, right? Because look at the threat feeds here. The, you, you just get standard six threat feeds with Active Trust standard, but with plus and advanced, you get all these additional feeds. So in plus, as John just talked to, and what is indicated in red are the two additional feeds. And then with the Active Trust advanced, you get eight additional feeds, right? All the ones he just described. Tide integrations I talked about, not available with your standard, but with the plus and advanced, you get the integration or you know the intelligence is ported into the Cisco Threat Intelligence Director, as well as the Checkpoint Threat Cloud, which is work in progress and we should have the integration shortly. Same thing with advanced. RPC feeds, we talked about, um, uh, uh, both John and then Anne, one of our partners, Threat Intelligence Partners, and uh, from Farsight just talked about the threat feeds that are available in RPZ format or the response policy zones where, you, you can be, where it can be applied at the DNS control plane, right? So um, want to make sure that you understand the value of upgrading or purchasing Active Trust Plus and Advanced. A lot more intelligence, helps you from a data protection and malware mitigation, as well as from threat containment, because the more threat feeds you have and you apply, each of them bring their individual value. Like, uh, like Anne just pointed out, Farsight gets you that newly observed domains, uh, which can be malicious, right? So you have that uh, period where you can kind of observe and see if there is anything abnormal happening. And that's the value add by upgrading to Active Trust Plus and Advanced. You can block more threats, helps in threat containment. And from security operations, you can actually uh, push this using our API that I talked about to other third party, right? If you're a Cisco shop, you can apply it to the Cisco tools using the Cisco Threat Intelligence Director. If you're a checkpoint shop in the near future, you can apply it to, to checkpoint appliances. Similarly, if you have a SEM, you can you know, reduce the number of alerts to view. I saw a question come up asking, how do you help SEMS? Well, we kind of filter and prioritize the threats, right? In terms of saying prioritization, adding context saying why certain threats should be blocked. Otherwise you'll be sending all the threats to SIM and the SIM SOC guy who is gonna go scratch his head. Now I have these hundreds or thousands or millions of um, um, so-called indicators, which one do I first pay attention to or take action on. So that's the value add that Tide brings to the table with the Active Trust Plus and advanced versions of Active Trust. So really um, that, that is where the value add uh, uh, we bring to the table um, in terms of really highlighting the different um, enhancements to Active Trust Plus and advanced. And again, the more threat feeds, we are, we are actually curating them, making sure there are the least number of false positives before we apply it to the security infrastructure. And not every vendor does that. So uh, remember that. So that is really a compelling value proposition for you to, you our customers to really look at Active Trust Plus and Advanced. And as you know, there's always a 30-day evaluation which you can download from our website, www 
www.infoblocks.com uh, and look at products, go under Active Trust, and, and you can download a free version there of um, either Active Trust Plus or Advanced. Um, with that, let me open it up for questions that have come up here. Let me read out the first uh, question. I think it's Domenico uh, Bodiga. Active Trust is a bundle. What's the components? I just talked about uh, the components in the very beginning, but I'll reiterate again. It consists of the uh, DNS firewall, which is basically an on-prem DNS firewall. It also has Thread Insight in the cloud, which is a version, which is an analytics engine, which helps detect any type of data exfiltration happening by looking at the DNS queries, looking at it in real time, and actually looking at whether you know people, a user or a device is sending out sensitive data using the DNS protocol. So we can do it in real time, um, which is a very unique uh, value proposition we bring to the table, and that's done in the cloud. That's called Thread Insight in the cloud. I just talked about Tide and the value proposition, so I don't think I need to reiterate again. Uh, the Infoblox dossier, which is a threat investigation tool, which is like a Google search-like tool, which looks at a whole database, historical database of malicious sites, the URLs, IP addresses, and so on, and that provides you context. So you can type in a URL or an IP address that you think is suspicious, and if you have that information, it will pull out the whole history, you know, what organizations it has been through, what countries, uh, what I, uh, uh, you know, does it belong to a particular hacker, for example, that's the level of detail we can provide. So all the four components are included in Active Trust. I think we had, uh, John, a number of questions come up through q and I believe, if I'm not, uh, or through the chat. Let me look at the chat to see, read out a few questions on chat. Hello, team. Um, and maybe, John, you can answer this because I, uh, I just answered a few. Do you recommend that the client aggregate all the threat intelligence in Tide and then go and then before going to the SIM or what is the best practices recommended if the client already has some threat intelligence feeds and a SIM? Why don't you answer that question first and then I have a follow-up uh, question. Yeah, um, ha happy to. Yeah, I mean, our, uh, our Tide or our threat intelligence uh, data exchange. I mean, say, think of it as a data management tool um, that does integrate um, with the different security devices out there, including including our SIM. And so, as you as as we aggregate this data, whether it's data provided by Infoblox, if it's data provided by our our partners, you know, for example, you know, Farsight, who you know, we talked to, and whether it's you know, Emerging Threats or Threat Track or the other. Uh, data providers that, that we have, you know, you know, AIS. You, you, Sam, you touched um, on the AIS data that that we're grabbing down from um, from the government program there. Yeah, I mean, think of Tide as kind of a single repository of, of data that you could manage your data, and you can write various APIs against that data. So you may have different use cases against that data. So if I want to grab, you know, malware C2, you know, across my you know, the Infobox data and our data providers, partners, you know, that's one of the heavy lifting that we do. One of the value that we add is, is kind of we normalize and standardize that data. And so you're able to take that data and stream it out by threat class, threat family. Um, you know, it could be, you know, for like our active threats, for example, you know, you may want to take that data and say, okay, I'm interested in, in um, you know exploit kits and you know I want to stream that into my my sim for example so yeah I, I would definitely say you know tied doesn't add value you know for uh, for for being a, your, your data management tool um, by no means are we replacing a sim we are basically taking our data and and stringing it out. And you could take our data and enrich some of your events, you know, the, the indicators that, that's within your sim already by what we have. You know, again, it could be you know, threat family, 
uh, there's different metadata that will attributes that we attach to our, to our threat. So you can enrich your, your SIM uh, that way. Or you, you talked about um, dossier or threat research tool. You know, so if there is an event within your SIM that, that you have, you know, we have our collection of data within Tide, and you can, you know, make an API call and grab that additional threat lookup data that we have about that threat, um, make that API call and bring it back into your SIM or, you know, whatever security device you have. You know, again, you know, if you want to, um, you know, you know, stream out data to your, your perimeter security, again, you know, just use um, our, our Tide platform for that. Again, it's, it's um, you know, it's primarily a, a, a data management tool, you know, that's, you know, agnostic, agnostic with, with your different uh, security devices out there. Yeah, thanks, John. I think that's important because people tend to say, hey, I have a SIM, so why, why do I need you? We actually enhance the SIM, right, by prioritizing the different types of threats, aggregating them and adding those different classifications that I talked about in the beginning, right, the properties. So that gives them more context to say, hey, uh, for, um, you know, to look at it from a SIM perspective, um, at, at what are the prioritized one they need to address first, right? So that, that's how I would look at it. it. Looks like we have a second question come up here. Oh, okay. So it's Don Nico just saying it's okay. Um, I don't see any other questions, John. And uh, so that's the closing comments is, hey, thank you all for attending. I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully this, this was very educational in providing you the context and why you should, you know, if you are a DDI customer or a, a new prospect looking at InfoBlocks, what we bring to the table in terms of new threat intelligence and new integrations from a type perspective, how we enhance the security posture of your organization with additional threat feeds and integrations. Uh, perhaps if you're a Cisco shop, checkpoint shop, or you have your secure web gateways, email gateways, so on. Uh, uh, think of uh, the Tide as an open, flexible platform, taking in all the threat feeds, aggregating them, and applying them to your security infrastructure in a very flexible way because we have all this flexibility. And then, you know, uh, again, uh, partners such as Farsight bring you the newly observed domains. Uh, and uh, the more threat intelligence, the better. But that's where we come into play with our. A cyber threat intelligence unit where we are actually able to curate that information, make sure there are less false positives, validate that the domains are still pretty good, and add our own intelligence into it. So that's the value proposition, the value add we bring to the security infrastructure. With that, thank you all for your time. And uh, um, any other further questions, feel free to reach out to John or myself. And anything on Farsight, feel free to reach Anne. And Anne, thank you so much for your time. And you. uh, yeah, appreciate you taking time from the, uh, from the East Coast and John from Seattle. Thank you so much for your time.